Hey guys, Patriot with you for a little evening slash night hike. And uh, I just decided about a half an hour ago to come out here and enjoy a little bit of hiking. What's nice, I noticed about keeping my pack ready to go, everything in it that I would have for a little desert hike, I've got everything that I need. I've got a flashlight, I've got, uh, all, all I had to do was uh, throw my food in there and a little uh, homemade alcohol stove. Which I'll show you guys later. And we're just gonna hike towards the west here until it gets dark and then we'll pull out some dinner, have a little bit of soup for dinner, homemade chicken noodle soup, test out that new alcohol stove, and who knows, maybe we'll see some critters along the way. Thanks for tagging along, guys. Now the camera's picking up a bit more light than what I'm actually seeing with the naked eyes. But uh, I'm having to watch my step a little bit today, just with regards to brush and whatnot. I was out riding my mountain bike yesterday and took a little slide on the pavement, some real slick concrete, but uh, jacked up my leg a little bit. Nothing but a bit of road rash. So I'm trying to keep the keep it clean. I just kind of treated it with some stuff and looks like a woodpecker might have been bagged here. Probably a gila woodpecker. Well, woodpecker. <laughs> They, uh, they do fall prey to hawk and uh, other predators from time to time. Desert's real dry, real dry, and it's warm. When I was driving out here, it was 84 degrees, and it's uh, 5.45 in the evening. So the desert's a little crispy. Uh, I've been watching for snakes. We're kind of on the downside of snake season, so they'll be denning up. There's not, I, I haven't seen any. I was talking to my neighbor about it today, and he also gets out and hikes some of the same areas I do, but uh, he hasn't seen any either. But still, I keep an eye open, especially on the west side of rocks and bushes right now. I guess I can show you guys my war wound. Um, so if you're squeamish or you don't want to see this. <laughs> so mostly road rash. The, uh, the top of the knee is a little bit sore. I think the kneecap hit pretty hard too. So oh, I've just been trying to kind of work it out a little bit. It only happened about a third of the way into my ride yesterday. Uh, so I just kind of rode the thing out a little bit. But the first time I bent my knee all the way and kind of did a squat, I really felt it. So anyhow, it's doing pretty good today and I suppose uh, this will actually help a little bit as long as I don't go tearing it through the brush. So that's why I'm walking walking carefully or picking my steps carefully. Looks pretty thick back in here. But I already said that I was going to walk to the west, which is right that way, right where those two saguaro cactus are, uh, until it got dark. So I'm going to go ahead, even though this looks like a really nice spot, uh, I'm going to push on forward. So last time I came out here and made a little dinner, or I guess it was lunchtime, and it also was chicken soup, homemade. 
but on a friend's alcohol stove that he made for me, I ended up having a mountain lion staring at me about 30 yards through the brush as I was sitting down having my soup. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna roll that footage in here. I guess it was a couple of years ago now, but uh, if I do, I wanted to make this intro for it. Alright guys, uh, it's not quite dark yet, but I decided to go ahead and get out my meal, try out that stove out here. We've still got just a little bit of skylight and it'll help with the, uh, the video images a little bit without artificially lighting it, so let's go ahead and warm up some chow. Alright, got some flat area here. Get a clear of uh, cactus needles. And we'll get out that little stove. It's my chicken soup. Got some crackers in there and brought a spoon along. And I got my little GSI cup here with a little homemade job. So far, it seems to work real well. It's actually a replica or a duplicate of a uh, another model but uh, seems to work really well sure hope I brought the yep there it is I was afraid I didn't bring my alcohol my alcohol all right so don't need a pot stand with this one just set it on top all right guys there's a couple different ways of lighting this one um, I can actually trickle a little bit of a uh, little bit of alcohol along the bottom here uh, to help it prime, and it lights super fast. But uh, we might just go ahead and try it without a prime and let the store the stove warm up naturally. Put about uh, three quarters, maybe an ounce of fluid in there. There it goes. I didn't really think about how I was going to get my soup into this cup. I guess I can just pour it. So this is lit right now. And we're just going to let it prime naturally. That is, I'm not assisting it with any alcohol at the bottom. There's my chicken noodle soup. Had half of it last night. Going to have the other half tonight. See if I can do this without spilling. If I do, though, you'll get to see it. Did pretty good there. All right, you can see it's a little bit thick, and I'm gonna thicken it up with crackers, so I'm gonna add a little bit of water in there. A little bit of water added. Uh, I should probably should have timed that for you guys, but I'll be doing stuff with that later, so I think we're good. You can see the uh, alcohol start to bubble. Okay, the flame's kind of dancing around the edge there a little bit. And uh, usually when it does that, it's within a few seconds of priming. Or I should say coming out the side nozzles. Uh, typical, typically when the stove is cold, it takes about a minute and a half to two minutes to warm it up. But when I trickle a little bit of alcohol along the outside, it fires up really quickly. Uh, like maybe 10 seconds, 12 seconds. It's 
starting to bloom on the side over on the back side here. Probably see it up there a little bit. Now when I put the soup on, there it goes. We got full bloom now. And this thing is a little a little beast. I mean it really puts the BTUs out. So the GSI, you can see some of the flame coming up around the side there. Um, the GSI might be on the narrow side for getting, a, uh, getting this thing going quick. Well, I shouldn't say that because I typically can get a boil in about four minutes out of two cups of water on about three quarters of an ounce of fuel. So I've been playing a lot lately with alcohol stoves, making some trying out old ones that I've got, kind of comparing them. Uh, but this isn't two cups of soup, so this is going to heat up really quick. All right, we're about three and a half, four minutes in, and it's boiling. So I'm going to get it off of there. And we'll let that dude burn out. It's going to be a bit too hot to eat. Just gonna add some crackers in there. Put this back away. So I get all the gooey soup all over everything. You can see the uh, the bloom went away here. Cool this down with a little bit of water. Way too hot to eat right now. And uh, it, it's already warm, so the idea of having real hot soup right now uh, kind of isn't appealing to me. But we'll let this chill out a little bit as our fire dies. I should put my hand down without getting a sticker in it. Good hearty stuff there. Hmm. Well, if it was about 20 degrees cooler, that would taste even better, but it tastes pretty darn good just as it is. I think it was 87, 88 today. November something, 11th. Mm. That's really good. You know what's kind of cool is, oh, can't do that. Um, <laughs> sorry about that. Is that you don't have to come a long way out to to be able to go out and have some fun like this. I'm only a thousand yards, I'm just over half a mile from a main road, or you know, a side road anyhow. Get out of here. And, uh, and it's, it's just really peaceful. I mean, even if you've only got a park near you, you can go out and do this kind of stuff. Take some uh, food out of the fridge and just warm it up out here. Yeah, it's, it's not a multi-day backpacking trip or anything like that, but it sure is a great way to finish out a day. Mm. Well, I'm, uh, I'm happy with this little stove. Still a little toasty. I think it turned out really nice. Seems like the jet holes are just the right size. Um, one ounce of fuel gives me about six and a half, seven minutes of burn time, but it boils two cups of water in about four, anywhere between three minutes and 40 seconds, and about four minutes and 20 seconds, depending on the fuel that I use. Today I used denatured alcohol, and that burns a little hotter and faster than heat, 
or Everclear. I decided to stand up a little bit. You know, it's funny, after you come out here and you have an experience of a large cat looking at you, trying to figure out what you're doing, <laughs> it kind of stays with you. I've had a, a couple of archery hunting experiences with mountain lions too. One as close as about 10, 12 yards away, didn't even see me, walked right past me. This pack I'm using is a real inexpensive field line. I think it was $17. And I was in need of a new desert pack. I've noticed over the years that was an unnatural sound right over there. Anyhow, I was saying that these uh, packs that I use out in the desert t seem to take a beating. <laughs> they last a couple of years and then they wear through at the bottom or they get so sweat soaked and there's salt all over the straps and everything and they're not pliable anymore and they start to rub you. So I thought if I can find a real cheap alternative under $20, that works for me. It's comfortable. I think it's uh, with the water in there, it's about 10 or 12 pounds. It's uh, really quite bright out here still. I mean, enough that I can move around without running into stuff. Probably not with the light off. But I'm going to use a light because I don't want to uh, open my wound. See one of the planets up there, I think. I think Jupiter right there. Let's see if I can get that. Right up above it there. Alright guys, well my food is all digested, and it's nice and dark, and so I'm going to start my walk back out. I'll show you some of the lights over here. There's two parks off in this direction. One's a huge soccer field park, and I can kind of use those as navigation. Plus I got a big bright moon right there. Half moon, just over half. So, uh, I've got my PD-35 tonight from Phoenix, and on my side... I've got the TM26 Nightcore. I've done a review on that light, but uh, I didn't have a belt on tonight, so I just stuck it on this belt loop. This Nightcore TM26 has kind of become my desert hiking light. Especially out here in the flats, where you're not looking across huge distances, that 40,000 candela throw gets you out to a couple hundred yards. That is a big nest. It's a big red-tailed hawk nest up in the saguaro. I'll show it to you. See it right in the uh, upper two thirds, right up there. It's about 35, 40 yards away.
Well, I'm definitely not having any trouble navigating around without scraping my leg on something. So that's good. Wasn't sure if I should wear long pants, but I'm still, I'm still a little sticky. I got yotes out that way to the east. Can't hear because of the airplane. I got them to the west too. Got them in like three different areas. Brought my Glock 19 with me tonight. That's actually in my pack right now. Again, I didn't have much time to leave today, and so I didn't grab a belt or anything. But I've always got old Reliable right here, the Voyager XL. Ooh. Okay, I finally hit my first bush. Not bad, though. Just touched it. <laughs> so sorry I didn't uh, see a lot of critters tonight. Um, it's kind of a hard time of the year right now. The deer aren't real plentiful. They haven't moved down from the north country yet, so we're kind of in an in-between stage. Starting in about uh, three or four weeks, I'll be getting some good uh, mule deer pictures for you. Video. Let's go see if I can find you something here tonight. Still hard to bend that knee. <laughs> 